Hello, this video is going to give you an introduction to the new custom prop editor in Vixen 3.5. So when you want to use the custom prop editor, there's a multiple ways to access it. One of the quickest ways is from the tools menu on the main page. It's the top entry here, custom prop editor. And I'll show you where you can access it in other places later on. Um, this gives you a, a new window here that's, uh, that's it's the editor to create these custom props in. It's got a toolbar on top with some uh, image or some editing uh, tools here. It might look familiar that these are similar to what's in the current preview today. Uh, this pane over here is your element setup. This is very similar to the element layout in uh, the current preview or the display setup. The order tab here is a new notion now in uh, 3.5. We can actually specify wire order uh, for elements, and this will also help us with patching uh, elements that are, may have a different order than what we want them organized into the actual element structure. We'll talk more about that. Uh, there's some tabs down here that have some general information uh, you know that you can fill in for your for your props and physical you know properties if you want to use those some vendor information if you're actually a vendor creating these things you can put some information in there and a general notes field where you can add in you know custom notes whatever you want to you know lay out the prop so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and um, I've created an image and let me go ahead and grab this and load it up so you can take a look at it. This is actually uh, one of the custom um, chroma flakes from Bosco Studios, the 24-inch with the three prongs. Pretty typical, you know, a lot of these, uh, they have a lot of props there. So um, I've created uh, an image from, from one of these that I can use to, as a, a rough guide to lay things out with. Um, I'm going to go up here and actually cut back the, the the, how bright this thing is because I really don't need but just enough um, that I can see where to actually drop the pixels when I actually lay it out. So I'm going to go up here and actually name this thing. I'm going to call it Snowflake. And I'm going to give it a, a, a token here with this um, embraces in the zero. This will actually be a, a suggestion to replace it with some value in the preview when this actually gets loaded in. This way I can use the same model to have Snowflake 1, Snowflake 2, Snowflake 3, Snowflake 4. You can use any number of these tokens, you know, and the general pattern around them is, is two curly braces and some uh, number inside of them. And, and uh, what it will actually do when it imports into the preview, we'll see later, each one of these unique tokens, it will prompt you when it sees them, ask you for a replacement value, and then it will actually tokenize those in the in the actual uh, element structure when it creates it in the preview. And we'll see more of that later on. So the basic uh, concept here is to, is to create lights and lay things out in the simplest form. So um, I know with this, uh, this prop here that I, um, I kind of know what I, my wiring that layout is. You know, so I'm going to go ahead and follow that for, for the principle here of setting that up. Uh, you don't have to. You can go back and rearrange this stuff later on. There's many ways to do this. So I know that, you know, when I wired this, I started here and then I did some hop skips around when I actually did it to make it all wire correctly. This is fairly common, I think I've seen from this particular prop. So I'm going to start here and I'm just going to start clicking. I'm going to add the lights in and this is just kind of following what I know the order that I wired it. But again, it doesn't necessarily have to be. This can be fixed later on or changed. So I'm walking around here and creating these lights one at a time as I walk around here. And if I don't get these clicked in exactly the right spot that I want, you know, I can always go back after the fact and and move these around, rearrange them, adjust them. You know, there's there's plenty of um, uh, capabilities to do that up there. So we're walking around here, getting these all clicked in here. Like that. All right, so now I have all of my 
my lights in there. So um, I basically done with my drawing there at this point. And um, so now what I want to do is actually go over here and organize this a little bit. So I've got a, a raw list of um, of lights here, and um, for the most part, you know, I, I really want this to have some kind of grouping organization so that I can actually um, um, create you know effects and things with it. So I'm just going to go in here and create an empty group. And um, I'm going to call this branches. And then I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call this center. So now I've created those two. And you can see I've got a branches and a center in here. So um, the next thing that I want to do is actually pick the ones of these that are my branches. So I've put this back into selection mode here. So I'm going to go over here and just select a block of these. This is branch one. So I'm actually going to actually move this to a new group. And I'm going to call this snowflake zero, whoops, branch one. So this is going to create and move all of those to a branch here. So this is actually, one, I want to take this, I'm going to drop it on my branches group here, and I've started to organize this now. So I've got these in here like this, and then uh, part of this is I want to rename these things as well. So I'm going to do a find and replace rename. There's a couple different flavors of the rename here, which mirrors what's in the, in the current um, display setup. So I want to take this group up here that's in here, and I want to actually replace it with branch one. And I want these things to have some pixel designation on the end of them here, like that. So that's pretty close right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I've renamed these things. And again, you know, these all have the tokens in them. So like when I when I bring this into the preview, if I substitute this with the number one, I'm going to get, you know, get Snowflake one in all of these pieces. It's paramount that you make sure that these all have some kind of a token in them if you're going to use more than one, because if you don't, then you'll be subject to the to the random uh, uh, naming that occurs when you create duplicate elements. So it's going to append something on the end, and it may not be exactly what you want. So the part of the, you know, the next thing is really just to go through the additional steps and, you know, select each ones of these, move them and organize the groups just like you want there. So I've already done most of this for, uh, for the sake of time. I'm just going to go ahead and open the um, existing one that I've already created here. And we can see here that I've actually got this all created and organized. So I've got my six branches here. You can see that when I click on each one of these, I'm walking around there. You can see each one of the lights get highlighted for each one. Got my center here. These are my lights in here as well. These are all walked around. So I've rearranged all these into grouping now. The ordering here still has um, the order that I that I entered them in. So it's pixel one, pixel two, three, four, as, as you go down here. But you can see they're all mixed up with how I've you know, got my naming and organizing going. I can drag and drop these around to rearrange them if I want to change the wire order in here in any way when I'm setting this up. If I didn't enter the, you know, click on the pixels in the wire order, I can go back and move these into the to the proper wire order. The wire order here does not it does not relate or change in any way the organization that I have here. So this is really how I want it organized in my in my uh, display setup as far as being able to sequence it. I've got the centers, I've got all the branches. I can do some pretty pretty effective sequencing with this at this point. Um, so that's really the the key thing there. So another, you know, thing that you know that could actually be done, you know, is is um there's a lot of features in here that, you know, if I'm actually got this selected, I can actually um you know rotate these things around. You know, there's there's all these editing features up here to help you line up pixels, you know, when you're creating them, you can, you know, create, uh, increase or decrease the bulb size of certain bulbs. If you want some bulbs to be bigger in, in the prop than others, you know, those, these things up here are fairly self-explanatory. 
as far as that goes. So now that I have all this created, I'm going to close this out and I'm going to go show you how to, to bring this in and actually use it. So let me first go and show you in my display setup. I've just got an empty profile here. I really haven't done anything yet. And it doesn't matter. This could um could actually have been um, you know, have other props in there at the same time. It um you know, it's doesn't matter at this point. I've got a simple controller here uh, on streaming 131 to to patch stuff to when I get you sh to show you that part of it. So I'm going to go into the preview here now, and I've got a, you know an empty preview here that I've you know set up for the purpose of this demo. And um, so we don't have anything in here at the current moment. You could already have had props; it really doesn't matter. Um, up here is some uh, new areas to actually um, interact with the uh, custom prop editor. I can actually load the custom prop editor from here as well, just like I could from the tools. It opens it up in here. Um, this is a, um, a window here where I can actually navigate to uh, a custom prop file and, and drop it in. If I do that, it will just end up up here in the upper left-hand corner. Um, this is a, a library link that's going to eventually be there in future versions. Right now it just opens up, up Windows Explorer to a, um, a location you know, in your documents folder where you can go uh, hunting around for um, the prop that you may have. And this is, this is useful because um, you can actually drag and drop these things into, um, uh, into the preview. So I've got the prop here that I had made and saved before. So I'm going to take this and just bring it up here and I'm going to drop it right here. So now you'll see that it comes up and it's prompting me for what I want to replace this token with. And there's actually a bug with this dialog box in the, in the release version. If you have the custom prop editor open still, this dialog will show up centered over it, whatever window it's on, as opposed to this window. That'll get fixed in a subsequent release here. For this, I'm, you know, what's going to suggest one, which is just a, a simple default there. You know, I can use whatever I want. So my first one, it's my first snowflake, I'm just going to use one. So I click OK here, and now you'll see that I have my snowflake dropped in here. And it's already created the elements for me over here and dropped them in here. This is a little different than what you're used to seeing with um, uh, the actual creating your elements first in the display setup. This is a little backwards to that. But this actually did create those elements in the display setup, just like if you would have created them over there yourself. So now you'll see that the whole structure that I had created in the custom prop editor is now all in here in, in the exact fashion I had it there. You'll also see when I click on this, it's already linked. So I've got you know my branches there, branch one, branch two, three, four, all the way around, and then my center down here, and then you start seeing the center pixels in there. So everything's all linked up and ready to go now. This is a you know a big win here as far as simplicity from from that perspective. Um, I can actually take and, you know, move this guy around, you know, just like I was, you know, do any other prop. I can resize it, change that around. Um, custom props can actually be um, rotated in the dis in here in the preview. That's, uh, you know, a new feature there. We'll try to get some of the other regular smart objects to support that as well. So there we go. I've got a brand new snowflake in here. Now I decide that I want to add another one. So I'm just going to come down here and grab this one. And this one I'm going to call it number two. So whoop, there we go. And now I've got snowflake number two. You see it's linked there. I can bring in one more. Call it number three. I can do this however many times I want. Then now I can actually come over here and I can line up the tops of these. You can actually set them all to be the same size. You can distribute them evenly, and then you know I can then move them around however I want. All the normal preview stuff works as you would expect with these things. So there we go. I have uh, three snowflakes in here. Let's go see how this uh, happened in the display setup portion. So I'm going to close this out. Say OK here, and I'm going to go look in the display setup. Here we are. All three of my snowflakes are in here, all ready to go. Now, the interesting thing that you will also notice with these is um, 
they already have their color handling set on these because of, they were created as you know default as a full pixel in the in the custom prop editor. Um, these all have. If I go down here and drill into these, you'll see the little green dot. They have the order, which is a new property based on that uh, order that I showed you in the custom prop editor. They have their color set, and because they were in the preview already, they already have location set up in the in the preview as well. So it, this ordering is again useful for patching. So if I click on this, and then I go down here to patching order, and I open this up, you can see this is the order that they will actually be patched in. I've got that configured. It's a lot like the interface that was in the um, uh, the other um, the custom prop editor. I can actually edit these, drag them, and move them around if I want to change it. You know, once I'm in uh, the display uh, setup now, I can alter this if I want to. I can also go and do this for for elements that are not uh, created in the custom prop editor. I can just select an element and then you know it will lo load them up in the order that they are in the element structure. And then I can rearrange them to define custom patching orders as well. So that uh, allows you to do a lot with uh, not having to have um, uh, uh, elements in the order that you want to patch them or doing tedious patching because you have some odd ordering there that you need to use. So. It's a great new feature as well there. So that's all, and I'll show you exactly how this works. So I'm going to take, um, we saw there that um, uh, we've actually got it set up so that the pixel one, two, three, four, these are, she should patch directly in order there. But, you know, I, before if I were to go and patch this, then my controller it would have been pixel one first, then pixel six, then two, then three. I would have had to patch all this manually in the, in the old world. So now I'm just going to take this, assign it over here to this, and I've got my 144 total patch points. So again, the color properties were all set up on there. I'll show you that first real quick here. So we'll just take a look at this guy here in the graphical view. Let me unclick this over here. So you can see here that this already has the color breakdown set up on it by default to begin with. So I don't have to do any of that out of the box to begin with if I want the basic setup there. I'm probably going to add some more things when they actually get brought into the preview in the future if you wanted to have a dimming curve to automatically add that as well or prompt you for it, but that's not quite there yet. So let's go ahead and um, go back uh, where I was going to do here. I'm going to patch these up here real quick. Hit the patch. Patched all 144 of them. So let's just go look at this first guy here, and we'll get this to, whoops, sorry, we'll get this to actually find the elements that it's patched to. So you see it's been patched to that first grouping there. And you'll see here that, you know, this is pixel one. It's kind of hard to expand this up a little bit here. If I can get it a little easier to see. So you'll notice here this is pixel one. It's kind of hard to see there. It goes through that, and it's a patch to the first three outputs. This next one is pixel six. But you can see it's actually patched down where it belongs at the bottom of the structure. Uh, pixel two is here. It comes in here and is patched correctly where it should be. It comes over here, and it's in the next three outputs. So it's kind of hard to see here, but you can actually see that it's hopefully see that it's actually patched it in the order that I wanted rather than the order that they were laid out in the element structure over there. So that's a nice big plus there. So basically I've now set up with my custom prop everything I need to do. I'm all patched up. My colors there, my locations, everything is set to go. So now I should be able to go in here and create a new sequence. Out of the way and then I can drop a um, simple pulse onto this guy right here and uh, we can turn on the effect editor here and there you see that guy is and we can drag him down here and all three of them are working so there we go so now we have all three of them set up ready to go much simpler than than trying to create custom props in the past so I hope you enjoy that. There's a, I may make some more videos showing a lot more detailed features, but that's a high-level overview 
of the new custom prop editor in Vixen 3.5.